MTV Unplugged. It was a concept that appealed to artists and fans in equal measure. A set of songs delivered in a stripped-back format with little or no amplification and in a setting so intimate that each could see the whites of the other's eyes. For the artists, it offered the chance to demonstrate that even with back-to-basics instrumentation, their songs had just as much power and emotion. For the fans, it offered an invaluable glimpse of seeing and hearing material reimagined in a far more intimate setting. The MTV Unplugged series was an almost immediate success. Launched in 1989, it gave us landmark performances and yielded classic albums in their own right. Highlights include Neil Young performing a mesmerizing rendition of Harvest Moon, accompanied by guitar tech Larry Craig's On Broom, and Nirvana's unveiling inspired covers, such as the Vaseline Seizures the Wine for a Sunbeam, and David Bowie's The Man Who Sold the World. But for all its triumphs, the series was not without controversy. You already know about Nirvana, but I'll mention it regardless. Neil Young, for example, though, was allegedly so concerned by the performance of some of his musicians on the first taping of his Unplugged in December 1992 that he simply exited the nearest studio door and walked briskly down Broadway, forbidding the set from ever being broadcast. Two months later, he returned with a different lineup and delivered an iconic set that is as haunting as it is heartfelt. The Nirvana session, too, was allegedly fraught with problems. On the day before Nirvana's performance, on the 18th of November of 1993 at Sony Studios in New York City, Kurt Cobain refused to play. He did eventually show up, but he was suffering from extreme anxiety and in the middle of a severe drug withdrawal. As one of the production team put it, there was no joking, no smiles, and no fun coming from him. Everyone was more than a little worried about his performance. Despite the show's acoustic premise, Cobain insisted on running his acoustic guitar through his Fender Twin Reverb amp and effects pedal. The show's produ producer, Alex Coletti, built a fake box in front of the tube amplifier to disguise it as a monitor wedge. It was Kurt's security blanket, Colette told Guitar World in March of 1995. He was used to hearing this guitar through his Fender. He wanted those effects. The performance did turn out to be one of the, you know, the best performances ever due to their determination, the band's determination, to approach the show from a different angle than previous acts that had appeared. As Dave Grohl recalled, we'd seen the others unplugged and didn't like many of them because most bands would treat them like rock shows, Play their hits like it was Madison Square Garden, except with acoustic guitars. Now, I know immediately what you're thinking. What does this have to do with Oasis? Well, I did say that Neil Young and Nirvana had some infamous MTV Unplugged shows. There were problems behind the scenes. And Oasis it definitely is in the box of things going wrong behind the scenes, but the show still slapping regardless. Not everyone takes advantage of their unplugged opportunity. In 1996, when Oasis did their unplugged, lead singer Liam Gallagher blew his chance to shine and handed the spotlight to his songwriting brother Noel. You see, by the mid-90s, the format was seen as a rite of passage for the biggest artists in the industry, so it was no surprise when Oasis were announced for a show that will be recorded on the 23rd of August of 1996 at the Royal Festival Hall. By this point, the band were riding high on the success of their second album, What's the Story, Morning Glory. It had been a colossal global success, selling 4 million albums on release and going on to shift 22 million copies by 2008. The album yielded classics such as Wonderwall, Don't Look Back in Anger, and Champagne Supernova. This stellar period for the band culminated on the 10th and 11th of August with two massive shows at the Nebworth House, playing to crowds of 125,000 each night with 2.5 million people applying for tickets. It was a record-breaking number for an outdoor concert and remains the largest demand for a show in British history. The Nebworth shows were a majestic euphoric rush for the band, who then had just 12 days to prepare for a wholly different kind of performance. The pared-down acoustic MTV Unplugged show at the 2700 capacity Royal Festival Hall on London's South Bank. Even before the show, from the outset, the rehearsals were rocky. Even before we got to the day of the show, there was a concern, a concern with Liam. Jack Benson said he is the associate producer of the show and recalled that um, what he said in a documentary about the whole series, the MTV Unplugged series. It was a view echoed by um, fellow production manager Claire Wood, Claire Wool who said, and I quote, Liam was in the paper a lot leading up to the Oasis Unplugged. He was portrayed as a bad boy. I 
at some point during the song, Liam would kind of point to his throat like, I can't go on anymore. And Noel would start singing and Liam wouldn't walk off and the rehearsal would continue to go on. Next day, we go back. He shows up a little later, sings a little less. Third day rehearsal, shows up. He's wearing the same clothes. He hasn't shaved. Sings three songs, leaves. We've been told he didn't want to rehearse too much because he wanted to save his voice. But you get to a point where it's like, what's up with this guy? Is he going to show up? For the briskly professional American production crew, Liam's seeming indifference was baffling. Major bands and their labels were clamoring to get on this hugely popular format, which had the potential to send sales of albums to the roof. It also threw the whole production into question. Noel Gallagher was pondering exactly the same question. I think we'd have rehearsed for two weeks beforehand and Liam only turned up once or twice, recalled Nolan documentary. The day of the performance, he hadn't turned up, and there were rumors that he had been out drinking for a couple of days, and nobody knew where he was. About an hour before we were due to go on, he turned up absolutely shit-faced. We said, well, look, let's see if we can sing a couple of songs, and it was fucking dreadful. Facing the prospect of an Oasis MTV Unplugged without the lead singer, the production crew had to make the decision to whether to proceed or to abort the mission. But abandoning the show at at this late point made no practical sense. We had the whole crew there, everybody was standing by, so the decision was, let's go ahead and tape the show and then see what happens after that, recalled one of the production team. At the allotted stage time, the announcement came over the PA. Ladies and gentlemen, Oasis. We walked out um, and he wasn't there, said Noel. He was just like, I'm not doing it, recalled Noel. Liam ain't gonna be with us tonight because he's got a sore throat, Noel told the audience as he picked up his acoustic guitar and sat down on a high stool. So you're stuck with the ugly four. One thing that impresses when watching the band's performance 27 years on is how calm and unflustered Noel Gallagher is during rehearsals and how easily and naturally he pick up, picks up the reins as lead vocalist on the live taping at the Royal Festival hall but given the events unfolding during the rehearsals he probably realized early on that a liamless version of oasis was a very likely outcome in the event Nolan and the band delivered an iconic set a commanding and heartfelt performance enhanced by horns and strings admittedly it didn't have the force and visual impact that liam would have given the songs but Nolan's delivery resonated with emotion and intent there was almost this kind of feeling that Noel was enjoying the moment too recalled one of the production team where he had this opportunity to sing his own lyrics now the one thing that's always been mentioned about oasis's mtv unplugged is that liam was heckling during the show and it turns out that's true, uh, because a few songs in, Jacques Benson received a message in his ear monitors. Um, he said, and I quote, I remember hearing someone say Liam's in the house. One of the guys pans up and there's Liam with some champagne. He was just drinking and just slow hand clapping. As soon as he knew the camera was on him, he sort of acknowledged the fact that, yes, I'm up here drinking in the balcony and I'm not performing today. Liam then began heckling his brother and the rest of the band down on the stage. I was like, thanks, recall Noel, who at one point told Liam to shut up. The least you could do is show a bit of support. Ladies and gentlemen, stay exactly where you are. You are. Okay, we've got to check tapes and things like that. And you never know, the band might just be coming back out again in a minute. So stay exactly where you are.
The difficulties didn't end there. At the end of the show, as you saw in that video, the producer told Noel, the band and the audience, that they needed to just do the first song on this of the set again. And of course, then Liam comes on and he wants to sing, recalled Noel. After you played for an hour and a half of, or something, we told him to fuck off and he went home sulking. Despite all the problems, or possibly because of them, Oasis delivered an absolute classic of the MTV Unplugged series, and Noel's last minute shift to lead singer only heightens the drama. There's a real intimacy and beauty to the performance, reinforcing the creative value of the whole Unplugged ethos. And of course, the no-show of Liam and his subsequent heckling appearance from the balcony ultimately made it for great TV. As New York Times put it, the entire Shakespearean rivalry of the Gallagher's condensed into a single performance. Thanks for watching the video about Oasis's infamous MTV Unplugged. The next Oasis video I've decided will be about their feud with Blur. Um, people have been making some jokes recently that if Blur came back too, it would really reignite the feud they kind of had in the 90s, which I think would be pretty funny, because, um, it'd be appropriate for the video I'm going to make. And then after I make the Oasis vs. Blur video, I'll be making a video about Liam and Noel's entire feud. There's an article about it that explains it all, so I'm all set. But, um, besides all that... I'll see you all in um, a Lost Media video about Beavis and Butthead's Lost Game from 1998 that hasn't been released at all. It was supposed to come out, um, it's supposed to be previewed, I think. No, it was previewed at um, E3 1998, but it was never uh, released and mysteriously went under the radar.